there is a critical role, but also maybe the added role of being an artist is to invent, to give something a new shape, a kind of formal development or possibility. In a sense, this problem is impossible to correct. We don't know what we don't know. Uh, we can't imagine it um, to an extent. The loss cannot be repaired. I'm Elizabeth Price and I'm an artist. I'd say that my works in Moving Image perhaps owe more to the history of publishing than to the history of Moving Image. Uh, I combine often still images, photographs with moving texts and they're often accompanied by a soundtrack. Like in Underfoot, you basically hear typing. So we have a sense of maybe two people corresponding or working together to produce a narrative. So although I make videos now, it evolved by accident. I moved out of working conceptually with historic artefacts and narratives relating to them. And I started to use moving image as a solution to using longer narratives. I thought about what medium could I use that would maybe recover what was more aggressive about conceptual art originally. So I started using PowerPoint as this kind of rather vulgar and low medium used in academia but also by corporations you know very expedient very pragmatic and rather crude so I thought hmm, maybe video editing software could do this better I really just looked at it as a kind of solution and in a sense in that moment uh, certain aspects of my own history of being involved in music this different part of uh, knowledge and experience sort of flowed into that space and at that point I was making moving image but I kind of I feel like I sort of walked backwards into it you know not really knowing that that's where I was heading. But I admit loads and loads of material into the scope of a project more than can be contained more than can be reconciled in a in a composition or a narrative or an essay you know it's through that um, additive process not of um, not of removing things but of adding things that I kind of create something that's almost like overwhelming. The process is relatively straightforward. Even large files like these can be swiftly and painlessly encoded to the long-lasting carried in cells of the Lula. So Felt Tip is a is a short film which features a collection of textiles used for men's next ties produced between the late 60s and the kind of mid 90s which all feature electronic imagery and these the photographs of these tie textiles are used as the kind of visual material to accompany a science fiction narrative in which administrators have a digital data implanted in DNA which is an you know is it is possible to uh, store uh, digital data in DNA. I kind of divide the idea of, of work or employment into um, the idea of manual or physical labour, administrative labour and executive work. And we kind of move through we, these different levels of work and they're presented as hierarchies. So what changes in the office in the 70s and 80s is technology but is also you know, equal pay for women and the decriminalisation of homosexuality. So all these things are happening at the same time. And I think like, being interested in social history allows you to kind of think about those connections, but also maybe in, in the context of making art and not being a social historian, thinking about those as something which is experienced in a more rounded way, kind of emotionally and psychologically too. I get interested in these quite nerdy areas, like you know the social demographic of the office. It's possible to not only think about these, the politics, the consequences, but also to have a kind of emotional or affective relation to these huge kind of political forces that are Im embedded in things. A restoration is, uh, also features a group of administrators who are tasked with organising the image collection of a museum. So all of the photographs and documentary images uh, of a museum that they possess about their artefacts. And they use these images in the course of this film to basically illustrate the construction of an institution that they prefer to imagine. So they'd start off with imagery relating to the excavation of Knossos, excavated by Arthur Evans 
and rather dubious excavation because he fabulated somewhat uh, on the evidence to create the image of a civilization that he preferred. And so in a sense they take the materials produced by his fabulation and, and satirically invent again. And this seemed really interesting to me um, in respect of, in, in a sense, um, vocalising or animating the voices of the archive. So, like many people speaking rather than one. I suppose I was interested in, in the narrators not necessarily being people. So they, you know, they're often created through synthetic voice. So this means they're kind of disembodied, but also that they're also psychologically not really uh, constructed as people. You know, they may be perhaps the, the voices of an institution or an organisation. So the kind of the psychology, the emotional life of a library, a museum or of a office, you know, this sense of the construction of identity that takes place, which are, is kind of related to human identity, but it's, it's kind of uh, gothic and strange and kind of monstrous. Night of the World is a, is a film which imagines the consequences of an, of an actual historic event, which was the sinking of a cargo ship in the channel between the UK and mainland Europe in 2002. And this cargo ship went down with 3,000 luxury cars, and that's the point of departure for this film. With a science fiction premise, um, considering that there's this immersion in the, the kind of corrupting water of the channel, the dirty water of the channel, um, allows them to adapt their uh, intelligent digital in-car system and they develop a kind of consciousness and a consciousness that allows them to, uh, a kind of collective consciousness so they can move in concert which they express in the form of dance and kind of imagine their re-emergence um, back above the, the surface of the water. Science fiction genres and ghost genres, um, space genres maybe to some extent, are ones that I've used. They disturb categories of knowledge, you know, the, the category of life and death or natural forces and rules, you know, within these fictional constructs these things become malleable and new kind of hybrids or whatever can emerge. The reason why it's important to lend imagination to Social history is because, in a sense, the limitations of the social history we have. The historic record doesn't include the experience of a wide range of, of people with regard to gender or ethnicity or race or social background. So, you know, it isn't sufficient to simply rely on the, the record because the record is, is inadequate. So um, to this we must add imagination. and protest and um, absurdity and uh, jokes and sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs>